This is a conversation with Alan Armstrong, the writer of The Secret Garden of the Soul, a book about Kabbalah. Alan, I'm trying to understand, why is Kabbalah so important? Why is Kabbalah so important? I think you have to understand that the word Kabbalah means tradition, and it is a tra the tradition that is important. It's not a, a simply a tradition, a social tradition of pastimes, etc. It's a tradition of spiritual development that's evolved over the course of many, many centuries, if not millennia. And um, as a tradition, it is, uh, how do I explain? It is, as I said earlier, a tradition of spiritual development, a spiritual evolution. So we sat in a, a room full of books about spiritual development, uh, your personal study. So what makes this, your introduction, now it's available, so vital? Well, whether it's vital or not, I'm not sure. But what I do know is this, is that I was asked to write it. I was asked to write it by my students. It is an introduction to the subject, not a manual. It was never intended to be a manual, but it does cover a lot of background material concerning Kabbalah, about its evolution and its place in life. OK, so was there a particular event or a particular student that prompted you to begin writing that? Not really. Yeah, it came uh, under. Uh, hmm. It was pressure. The pressure over a course of time. I wasn't particularly wanting to write the book. I'm not sure that at the time that I wrote the book, I was qualified to write the book. Okay, but why is Kabbalah now so popular? You must have some insight into that. Well, why is it so popular? Oh dear, that's a that's a weighty argument, a weighty discussion. If you put pop Kabbalah aside popularity of that, whatever that might may mean, the um, Kabbalah that we're looking at, it is, a, um, it is a tradition of spiritual evolution, a spiritual evolution that establishes our source or the premise or, or the source of our existence, the meaning of our existence, the purpose of our existence, what we're doing, why we're here, where we're going. It's contextual, but it is a very dynamic tradition. So how can that help to really change uh, not just your students' lives, but the people who read this book's lives? As I said earlier, I was written for my students. And these people are uh, already committed to a path of spiritual evolution to which uh, we are all party. And they are engaged in that. It is also a book for people who are interested in the subject matter. It does set a background, a context. I would, it's not definitive. I mean, it, uh, there are 16 volume works which are not definitive. This is only one volume, but it is an interesting book nonetheless. And the, um, uh, as I said, I was requested by my students to write it. I've written it and quite honestly, I quite like it. Good. Well, so do I. Thank you, Alan. You've talked about this in generalised terms, Alan, uh, spiritual development, spiritual evolution. But where have you come from to bring this book? What, what, why is it so particular? It's obviously impacting on your life's journey. So why is it so particular? It's about context. It establishes a context. How do you interpret anything in your environment? Um, it is a context situation philosophy is a uh, means of contextualizing experience um, to get the meaning and insight and understanding so what's your context what's your philosophy for bringing this forward now well the kabbalah is a, a path of spiritual evolution it's a process of spiritual evolution it's a tradition come back to the word tradition kabbalah means tradition it is a tradition of spiritual evolution and it goes back as far as i know at least until the, uh, to the time of um, Moses and the movement of the people of Israel out of um, out of the land of Egypt. However, so are you saying this is just a Jewish thing? No, 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 no. I'm I'm exploring this from a Christian perspective. Uh, Kabbalah, as a tradition, and the term Kabbalah evolves within Judaism. No argument with that. And uh, the uh, Jewish Kabbalists have their take on this, their understanding of it, and uh, they would be well within their rights to claim it as their own. But there is a perspective on Kabbalah, 
which we can say has a Christian dimension. And it is in the Christian dimension that I am profoundly interested. So what is that Christian dimension bringing to the party that wasn't there before? Well, it's using the tools that we inherited um, and tools that we've evolved from the Judaic tradition and from the Greco-Roman world to understand the inner world of the soul. That's why it's called the secret garden of the soul. It's dealing with the inner world. The inner world of the soul, you could call it the mind. The mind is a garden named delight. It's a poem, first line of a poem, if I remember. It is. But this garden of the soul, in cultivating that, in nurturing that, uh, does your book help people discover the seeds within themselves? Or is it about them needing to find somebody like you to teach them further on a one-to-one -one basis? Well, I would hope so. I, 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 I know that uh, it touches some people, and I would hope it would touch more, but it is, uh, uh, that is down to the individuals. I know some people won't like it in all probability, but as far as I can see, the, it enabled people to recognise that the interior life of the soul is a territory that has been explored by many before. By, by a whole tradition of people and they have a whole set of parameters, a set of ideas and concepts and if you want the stepping stones that enable people a safe passage across the turbulent waters of um, 